Another very interesting aspect of InDesign is that it has a feature that allows you to type text on a path. So you can create any type of path that you want to and apply text to it and shape it and form it just the way you want it to look. So for this demo, I'm going to create a new page. I'm just going to use the standard defaults, one pager. I'm going to grab the pencil tool and I'm just going to make a squiggly, well, that's pretty ugly. Let's try that again. I'll just make a weird line that goes across, kind of like a little roller coaster. And what I want to do is come up to my type tool, hold down my mouse button and select the type on path tool. So when I do that, as I hover my mouse over my path here, we'll see a little plus sign. So if I click there, I can click and write my text. Um, over the lazy dog. All right, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. But there's an issue here with the way that I type this. And you can see, if we zoom in here, that my text is upside down on this current path. So how do we remedy this situation? I'm going to come up and grab my selection tool. And before we can remedy the situation, I need to point out that when we're typing on a path, if you look very closely up here, you can see that just like our standard or normal uh, text frames, we have this line with this square node in it, which is our front line. And then we have something very similar at the back or at the back of this um, path uh, that signifies the end of that. So I can move this along my path, which is going to represent where my text ends, right? So anything that goes beyond that, that line will be overset text. So my text starts to disappear and we can see that little plus sign. So what that means is if we have another path or another text frame that we want this to overlap into, we can specify that just like a normal text frame would. Now a question, if you're new to this, that you will probably have when you run into it, is how do I move my text on this line? Well, if we grab that front node and just kind of push it forward, then as we push it along there, our text will flow accordingly. But now we have, or we're still faced with a much bigger problem, and that is that we've assigned this text to a path, but it is upside down. And that's not really going to be easy for somebody to read. So how do we fix that? Well, thankfully, the ability to type text on a path is followed by the ability to assign some options to it. So if I go under the type menu, there is the type on path menu with two sub options under it. So the first one is options. The second one is delete type from path. If I select the delete type from path, of course, it's going to delete it. If I hit control Z, it'll bring it back up and we'll go back up to the path tool and we'll go into the options. Now the options is where it really gets fun because here you can apply several options to format this the way you want it, the way you want to, in addition to being able to apply paragraph and character formatting, or more specifically character formatting. So while this is on a path, I can still increase the font size, change the color, change the font if I want to, but I cannot do that from the type on path options. From here, I can assign an effect, and the default effect is rainbow, but here I can skew it. And we can see that it flipped it up right, but it's still backwards to read it. So don't get confused here with what's going to happen in just a second. <laughs> so here we have 3D ribbon, we have stair step, and we can also apply a little bit of gravity effect to it, which is kind of a cool little effect. But in most cases, you'll probably go with rainbow. But in the event that you typed your text on a path and it was upside down, you can always click the flip 
checkbox here to flip it upright. And that will, of course, read the way that it needs to read along the path. But the only difference here is, remember that your nodes have switched. So your front of your line is now on the left. Your rear of the line is now on the right. Here we can align it. Ascender, descender, center, which basically aligns the center of the text along your frame, or baseline. We can also choose the spacing of our text along this path. And we can choose two path options such as top, center, and bottom. And here we're previewing it. I'm going to leave it right where it's at and click OK. Now, you probably won't always run into that issue. And one example of that is if I delete that and let's say come in and grab the ellipse frame tool and just create an ellipse here and grab my type on path tool and click quick brown fox oops fox then we can see that it probably types more correctly and that's really just how i drew the line on my page if i had drawn drawn my line from right to left then i wouldn't have had that issue remember when we came in this is how i drew my line but if you want it to align from right to left by default, then you'll, of course, start your line from right to left, grab your type tool, hello world, thanks for watching the show. So just keep that in mind when you are drawing paths that it is going to be picky about how you place that path. But for every problem, there is a solution.